What the f*** is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Unwaxed Podcast with your favorite sisters, Sophia and Sistine. First thing I'm looking at is you're wearing a rock choker. Oh, not a rock choker. It's a crystal. You have two crystal chokers. Rock. Yeah, crystal rock. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I do. Well, it's ro- actually, no, no, no. It is rock and crystal. Do you have a toe ring as well? And a nose piercing? Are you no, drinking it's, kombucha? It's what some, is going on? Okay, I was influenced. An influencer was wearing this set, and I thought it was really cute. And I also just like the good energy that it kind of brings. And maybe I, 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 obviously I know everything is mental and I know that I feel, you know, when you say I, I'm obsessed with numbers, I've been seeing like four, four, four everywhere. And so I always say that that my angel numbers, those are what angel What does numbers. this have to do with the rock? But on I'm your saying neck? that I don't think that there are actual angel numbers coming at me. I think it's all mental. So I'm thinking, oh, yeah, this rock is giving me a lot Sophia, of balance. It looks like you literally life. went into a mall fountain, picked that up out of the fountain. That's so mean. It's not cute. I like it. I get what you're going for, but actually I just ordered you something similar to that for Christmas. Then why are you giving me shit about it? Because that one needs to go in the garbage. No, it's a cute set together. Do you guys like it? It's like, oh man, the red one's worse. No, it's not. Let me see it again. No. Show the camera. (laughs) Comment section you decide. I like it. By the way, it's a cute little set. Thank you. (laughs) All right, it's let's great. let's go into our wax. <laughs> You're just heinous. <laughs> what did you not do? Sleep last night? I, Why are you shitting on me? I woke up and chose violence today. Yeah, so did. strap it. It's a long episode. Jesus. All right. Also, I sound like a man, but I will get into why for our wax and wane of the week, which is a basically yep. our highs and lows of the week. Do you want to start or should I? Yeah, I can start. I feel like mine's probably a little simpler because you can kind of jump into yours. But my wax of the week is that I got to relax this last weekend with my boyfriend in in, uh, Palm Beach. So I didn't do what you did, which is the total opposite. What did you guys do? You know, we just went on like sunset walks, had fun dinners and drinks. You know Must be nice. It was great. Okay. I I had this debate with my girlfriend. Um, Actually, I guess not a debate, but an agreement. It is so nice to just drink wine at night and have that buzz. I think the best type of drunk is wine drunk. And after having that experience, it's just... You want to know why? Why? Because, sorry, wine drunk makes you a little frisky. In a way that... Don't have to call me out. (laughs) No, but I'll tell you why. Because tequila makes you sloppy. Vodka Uh, makes you gross. But wine, you're, you're feeling yourself. Your body's buzzing. It's warm. You I feel get. sexy, but you're bloated. You don't even know you're bloated from the wine. You're like fine being bloated. You're fine you're with totally you literally fine could being amputate bloated. my arm. I'm like, thank you. But it truly is the worst hangover. So it's almost like the reward. Is it worth the be- the I risk? Think so. No, is it? I think or so. Reward, pain, whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it was really nice. And I think also it's nice not having like a plan to go out sometimes because I I do like going out. I I do. Yeah. But when you're having a <clears throat> kind of a wholesome weekend, even though I did just say I was drinking. Um, and it just, it felt comfortable. No, you were calling you know? me. You were saying you're going for bike rides. I was getting FaceTimes from her at like 2 a.m. Well, I'll explain later. <laughs> I know we went to bike rides. It was just really, really cute. cute. It was really sweet. Right. And then my wane was, I I feel like people have this sometimes, but I woke up just, I think it was Sunday morning. Mm feeling horrible and I realized Mm. that I just woke up having major anxiety yeah I could tell you know I the night before I was super agitated Mm -hmm. like anything anyone said I was really sensitive to it I knew it was coming on because something that you always do when you're about to get a major anxiety attack is throw a whole lot of sass and a whole lot of eye rolls at everyone. I know people think, and I'm like, why are you getting so upset? People are like, are you, are you about to get your time. Of the I month? can tell. <laughs> I can hormonal. tell something's coming. No, but I, I felt like just really agitated. And Sistine, I remember I like said something kind of snarky, and you call me. I'd be like, whoa, bitch, settle down. Yeah, I was like, hold <laughs> on, I, little little lady. And these, I didn't want, of course, like when I'm in my mindset, like I don't think it's wrong. But then I realized later on. But I woke up the next day just like off, mm. and it wasn't. It, you know, when you have anxiety and you wake up, the first thing you feel is just kind of this dread and you kind of feel your body buzzing. And 
not controlled. Like I knew that if I was around anybody, I'd just kind of switch off. It's actually a scary feeling because you truly think that you can't control your emotions in that moment. Like yeah. you don't know what you're going to no. say. You can't help it. And my my anxiety problems, I'll wake up and I'll think about things that mm-hmm. I can't do all day. I'll think about things I have done. I'll regret. Like I'll say the things I'm doing right now, like writing a book, I'll be like, why the hell am I pursuing this? I can't do this. I'm, I'm also, a loser. I, and then I, think I also it. think another part of anxiety is you – you and I are planners for our day. We're yeah. like, okay, we're going to wake up at this time, eat, go to the gym. We have our whole schedule right. mapped out. And so we always do that the morning of and the night before just because we're neurotic like that. And when you have that plan for your day mm-hmm. and you're sitting in bed already knowing that you're not going to do it. So yeah. now you're even more upset with yourself yeah. because you're like, fuck, my anxiety yeah. won't even let me do things no, I want to do. And yeah, Completely. And you know, actually, this is probably if anyone has this where you wake up and you just feel like you cannot get out of your head, you know that you're going to snap, you're about to pop off and you really nothing is helping you. Actually, two things did help me. It was one, admitting to everybody and saying, hey, you guys, I'm actually feeling really shitty today. Like I can't, my emotions are just at an all time high. I feel really anxious and just give me a little bit of space. Like let me, I'm not, if I take shit out on you, I'm so sorry. Like I just know that I don't mean it. I'm just, I need to be alone a little bit. And then um, Sarah, who like works at the house with us, she, I was telling her that I wasn't feeling great. And you know, she actually snapped me out of it. I was just going to go on like a long Kind yeah. of therapeutic walk, just get out of my head. And Sarah goes, So what's wrong with you? And I go, True. I just don't feel great. She goes, Are you sick? And I go, No. She goes, Are you ugly? I go, <laughs> I Are you ugly? I'm like, I mean, I, I guess not. I, like, I, I mean, thank you. But uh, I, no, I guess not. But then she kept saying all these things. She goes, So what's making you anxious? That's true. She goes, Sometimes you need to Do you work? To I go, Yeah. Yeah. She goes, do you have a boyfriend? I go, yeah. Do you have a family? Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I was like. <laughs> That's a. Uh, now you by the way, no. that moment, I was like, I fucking put me in my place in perspective. Because so you, you went on a humbling walk after that. I did. I actually yeah. did. And this is the thing. When you have anxiety and your your thoughts and your emotions are so out of whack and you feel like you mm-hmm. can't control it. Sometimes. Getting that little perspective going, okay, what do you have? Okay, you have a family. But I do have to say, it depends on who it's coming from. Because if I said that to you, you'd probably back me. That's actually very true. I know. I do believe that. That's true. <laughs> it has to be from an outside source be- that you can't get mad at. Because I, yes. <laughs> so, yes, but I, is, it's true though. Don't you feel like you take yeah. advice more from people you don't know? Yes. Like if you told me something right now that was, we have someone behind the screen right now. If you told me something that was just very impactful in life versus when she would tell me, I think I would take it from you more. Rude. Not in a bad no way. Offense. No, Rude. I would take <laughs> <laughs> just because I feel like it's, you know, when you're with your family or people around you so often, like some you obviously appreciate their advice, but there's something that's more impactful and deeper when it's coming from someone else. Like, I, I feel get like that. the quotes I remember the most are the ones <clears throat> from random dinner parties where I'd sit some yeah. like next to someone, I go, wow. Like, oh, yeah, build calluses, work hard, like get your hands in the dirt and that's how you're going to make it. And it's just, yeah. So having that perspective change, maybe talking to someone else, maybe if it's your girlfriend, maybe it's your boyfriend, maybe it's someone that you know doesn't judge you but knows that they can kind of like reel you in a little bit. Definitely yeah. do that. Maybe it's the valet guy. Who knows? <laughs> it could be anybody. Could be anybody. It could be Santa Claus since it's the holidays right now. Oh, God. I'm trying to make a joke. Right. It just did not land. <laughs> I'm going to roll right past that one. My wax and wane of the week. Oh, my God. Okay, so actually, for the first time in podcast history, I don't have a wane. It w- and I'm guys. one to complain about everything. Actually, I do have a wane I just thought of. Your necklaces. That's N- you're no, so mean. That's my wane. <laughs> my wax I mean, it's true. No is, one's complimented me on these yet. I told you guys on the last episode that I was going to Miami. I needed to let loose. Sophia and Scarlett, my whole family basically always calling me the boring one, that I don't loosen up, that I don't go out. Sistine, you called yourself literally the last two episodes the boring one that doesn't yeah, go out. Yeah, but I don't like to hear it from you guys. It's different when I say it about myself. You are a little bit boring. I know. And I don't ever drink. <laughs> I don't loosen up. So I told you guys I was headed to Miami for the weekend, and I will give you a recap. And let's just say my wax is the weekend. Yeah. Y'all. Tina, my alter ego, came out to her fullest. Guys, look at her nails. Don't look <laughs> at my nails. I got Miami nails. I saw I them fully, in the car. Listen, I fully converted to like 
the ratchet lifestyle that is Miami. And I loved every minute of yeah, it. I did. went out four nights in a row, four days in a row. I drank. I rallied. I didn't sleep. From Thursday to Sunday. Literally, no, Thursday you guys, to Monday. I went out Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I had a train. I was going to take a very depressing train ride home, hungover on Sunday. And I said, you know what? Cancel that train, Mr. Train Conductor. I'm staying another <laughs> night. I was like, why not? I got some left in my system. I'll go out again. It was so much fun. Yeah. And just being in that environment, knowing that I can do it, I was so in my head. I was yeah. like, Jesus Christ, it's not that bad. I told you that. I know. And you, you and I had went, a great time. And your level of going out was when it went from zero to 100. I mean, you barely have a glass of wine at dinner. Like, Nothing. she doesn't do anything. And that's I was, fine. I will tell you this I don't have, I didn't have one cocktail, I only did shots. That is heinous. I literally, uh, you know what I, I looked like in the morning? Because I would stay out till four. You know what I looked like in the morning? What? I looked in the mirror. My face was so swollen. It looked like green yellow. I was like, oh my God. I looked like the Mucinex guy in the commercials. Oh, that's my how God. I was like bloated. I was like, oh, Jesus. Wait, did you have like an ice roller or something? Ice rolling my face all day. I mean, by the did way, it again the next night. I heard actually a good hack to get over hangovers was dipping your face into an ice bu- um, bowl. I should have done anything. Or a, a bucket of ice water. I was taking ginger shots, carrot shots. I was just trying So what did anything. you do each day? Well, you can give maybe like a brief Thursday. summary. Thursday. I went to a rave. <sighs> that was a mistake. That was too much. I was, you know, I went into the deep end with that one. But it was fun. I ran into some old friends from LA. That was great. Mm-hmm. Friday, I was very hungover. So I just took it easy at a dinner which ended up turning into a club. So that was my easy but night out. you didn't out. drink that night? No, I did. Saturday was my hard day. I went hard. I went to three different locations. I was, I literally went to bed. This is how Saturday went. I went to bed. I woke up. My feet were covered in sand. No recollection of going to a beach. Mm-hmm. I was covered in bruises and blisters. And there was booze next to me. And I was like, oh my. It was just eventful. It was fun. I think I... You know what's so fun is when you go to bed, your memory's a little bit blurry, a little bit hazy, and everyone starts sending you videos of the night before. Yeah. Yeah. That's not fun. It literally felt like the movie Hangover at the very end of the credits when they see the camera roll. I didn't get down from an elevated surface for three hours That's straight. That's a good workout. My legs were so toned. Yeah, I, mean, I was when you're sore. Yeah, and you're dancing on a table oh for my God. five hours. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just, you know, living my best life. But something I love about the Miami culture is the people watching. Yeah. You find I, some characters there. I tried to, like, pull out the smallest little dresses and just tried to, because I don't want anything like that. So I was raiding Scarlet's closet. So Sistine decided to dress up very opposite than she normally. Like, she was seeing wears, like, sexy outfits, but normally they're classy. These were just, like... Sophia's like, you look like you're wearing lingerie. It was lingerie. <laughs> if you want to look at like, our Instagram post, it's But mine lingerie. was, I swear, the most conservative one there. It was yeah. crazy. The girls, I mean, I was just standing there in awe. I'm like, first right. of all, the confidence, where did you get it? Because it's just, I don't know how they can be in... A napkin and call it an outfit. I think people are just that's the environment. People go into it going, okay, I'm gonna wear the tightest, shortest, most revealing outfit and yeah. just kind of own it. Because everyone and no one's like perfect there. I feel like here everything is I mean, look, I do think Miami can kind of get like a little bit Instagrammable type thing where people are oh, always trying to like outdo Everyone each- looks like Flappy Bird with the lips and the and the filler. Well, what, what is it, Doctor Miami? Isn't everyone gets procedures there? Is that Doctor Miami? Yeah, that's the thing. Everyone also kind of looks the same. So they go to the same plastic surgeon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very yeah. sign me up because <laughs> they look like they're having a great time. I loved it. I Did want to go back. Did anything happen that weekend that was just like a specific standout? Well, I ran into my friend Brielle. Yeah, Brielle Beerman. I love her, and I met her whole friend group, which. They're just so nice and having them all just sort of take me in. Right. And, you know, I was like the new kid in the group and they were just being so nice and it was so much fun. Like, Did, I feel like you just needed a reset because I think you forgot yes. that you can do it and you can go out of it fine. That's the lesson in this, you guys. Last episode, I was really down in the dumps. I was so sad. I felt like I was stuck in this hole for a few months, not even admitting how upset I was. And then just do something to make you uncomfortable pull yourself out of your comfort zone and maybe you might just like 
snap out of it, have yeah. fun, prove to yourself that you can do something that you're constantly telling yourself you couldn't. And I know it sounds silly as just going out and letting loose, but that's a big deal for me. Yeah. So just try and it. Just like relaxing. And, that, and you know what it is, is we had, we did debate with you, mom and I, in the car when we picked you up from the station. Is that you're like, oh, but it's Miami. That's why I did. I'm like, yeah, you can let loose, but you can let loose anywhere if you wanted to. You just need to just, you know, relax about it. I also think it depends on the group. Oh, yeah. It's a a group thing, too. That was a great group of people. I think it would have been a totally different experience. Would you go back for like a birthday or your bachelorette party? I'm already trying to go back. I know. I yeah. love it. I know. You should go Well, for like when New we Year's. move to New York, that's just going to be very easy. Jump, skip, and hop away. I'm 100% doing my bachelor out there. Yeah, I'm throwing it. I know you are. You and Scarlett are just going to be a deadly combo. You're going to cheat on your fiance. That's, don't say that. <laughs> that just is, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Make it my mission. Oh, no. I'm, oh, yes. Yours is going to be very, very, very fun, but it's going to be super thought out. Yours is gonna, mine's going to be, no, because you're too methodical. You're too organized. So it's going to be like, okay, in three minutes, we need to move locations. Hey, hey. Which is fine. It's going to be perfect. Anything and everything you want is going to happen there. I won't miss. You know what it is? I'm not going to miss a beat. Like everything that you can't yeah. miss, I will have right, there. Yours is going to be a little messy. Like you're going to wake up. It be messy. Lost but your engagement ring. I'll have a backup. In, the yeah. thing is, I'll have like backups for you. I'm like, okay, you forgot your engagement ring. I bought another one in case you forget it you uh you need to you're hung over you have to rally the next day oh it's okay IV drip is right here like yeah. I'm gonna be ready for that moment but Damn. you know you got to also experience it not in the probably more nor I not the normal way but I guess the stereotypical way of going because a lot of people have their routine of like you did go to live in those places yeah. but you got to see newer smaller places that people probably oh my just God. in Miami would know yes and can I just say I'm a good dancer no. Yeah, you're I knew you were gonna long. say that. That's why I said this. Yeah, your limbs are a little. You look. You're a little. I do look like the. What is it? <laughs> I I call you like the dancing cart. Uh, she said I look like the inflatable tube man outside oh, yes, the car the dealership. Tube, the car, yes. But people said I looked good dancing. Is there someone that said that specifically? Yeah, every person in the club. Okay. Bitch. Okay. <laughs> Was there one place that you would definitely go back to that you like really liked? I just wish I could go back in time and do it all over again. I was showing dad. We have a very open relationship with our parents. Yeah, we do. So I was showing them every video of me just like taking shots and on tables and having a great time. And I was showing mom and dad. And dad whispers in my ear. He goes, why the hell would you leave? And I was like, true. I know. <laughs> yeah. He gets it. I know. I know. Definitely much more upbeat than Palm Beach. So fun. I'm okay. glad that you had a good time. And, yeah. You know, it's fun also visiting Scarlett since she's there. And I mean, now we get to see her this week. But yes. it's good to, you know. I was actually... Thinking about this today because your boyfriend keeps hounding me about what to get you for Christmas. Oh, and I'm just as confused as he is. I don't even know what to get you, let alone guide him to know what to get you. I actually you. think the worst thing about holidays is gift giving. It's so I'm hard. I'm sorry. I hate it. No, because hate it. you're bad at receiving gifts. Yeah. Every Christmas... She no, is not happy me, with what we got her. You gave me shitty gifts. A squatty potty isn't like a nice gift to get. I'm I got not... you other stuff too. Name it. What? A boxers with Mabel's face no, on I it? No, I get you like really cute clothes. Like, come on. Yeah, you know no, no, I do. No, you do. Those are great. I receive it very well. I like everything that you give me. Not those gifts, but I'm bad at also giving gifts because I'm bad at thinking for other people like what they would actually want. I'll tell you why I'm good at gifts. Because I have a notes app in my phone. For about six months before Christmas, if Sophia was like, oh, the necklace you're wearing is really cute. I want to start like finding where those are. I will literally write it down in my notes. So that for Christmas, like for Scarlett, I got her this matching crop top pant set that she mentioned two months ago that she wanted. So I got her that. So see you remember. So they go, oh, my God, you have such a good memory. You're so thoughtful. Like, I know. I'm still trying to think of you and Scarlett. I love giving gifts. I hate, like, I don't want anything, but I just love I don't want gifts. anything. I also don't want to give it anything. <laughs> I just don't want to think about it. That's super sweet. It's, I can't. I'm good at writing letters. If you need me to write a really nice letter that'll make you cry, got it. Yeah. On you it. wrote all of the letters I to my I write every letter. Like, I, that's what I love to do. But it's difficult, especially, yeah, being in a relationship. I'm trying to think of what to get him, too. Why and don't you get him some slippers? I'm not getting him slippers. Why? He's going to use those a lot. Some nice Birkenstocks. I thought, I thought like workout clothes for a second because he loves to work out a lot. And I, he will use it every day. That's something that I would like. Things that you don't actually buy for yourself that you need. Like a matching that, pajama exactly. set. I, new underwear. Like nice workout clothes. Like socks. three sets, two sets, socks with it. And 
you know, and then I thought of something else. Like teeth funny. whitening strips, like things that you wouldn't splurge for yourself. A hundred percent. Yeah. But things I rec- I said it to mom and she's like, no, you got to go nicer. I was like, oh God, Jennifer. I know. She makes it so difficult. She actually is tough to, she's the hardest person to yeah. get gifts for is your parents. Yeah, that's, that's a no go. I would say for guys though, if you're shopping for him, I wouldn't do clothes. Because every time I bought a guy like a jacket or a pair of shoes, I just they said n- workout clothes, and you just no, said but that was I mean idea. like a nice jacket or a pair of cool shoes. Like they never wear it. Like, yeah, they have their style fair. and what they like, and you just waste all your money. Yeah, you get shoes. Wait, what else would you do? I've done cologne. I love a cologne. If like I can give you guys a hundred racks for cologne, like I'm trying to think, like nice one, Tom Ford tobacco vanilla. I mean, is it's, like okay. So say if great, he likes sneakers. Just get him, like, a cool pair of, like, New Balance. They'll always wear that. Uh, you know, something like that. Yes, get or a pair of dad that, shoes. Something that he already has, but just in a different wacky color. I think also what we've done is picture frames. I really... No, that it, is so no, middle it's school. Not, it's not... You've done it. You did it, actually. Like, not even that longer. I've yeah, done it. Yeah, I was ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you get out. like a really beautiful frame and then you put a cute photo of the two of you guys like, that's really cute. And then you write like maybe on the back of the photograph a letter. What are the weirdest Sweet. gifts that no, your I wanna, significant other has ever But what do you, no, you? I want to ask you like. Sophia, wh- I don't know. No, what about girls? What, to get girls? Yeah. Why are we, we can't miss girls. Like I feel like guys listen to this too. We have like 50% male listeners i mean bras if you think about it how old are your bras you're, you, no i'm gonna ask you, you this question me? how you old are, how old are your bras sustain um no they're pretty i re, not i never recycle i like i change them up they're pretty old is what she's saying <laughs> <laughs> that was a long answer to say they're pretty so old see, no i don't want my like boyfriend or whoever i'm dating to get me a bra that's kind of hot though that's yeah that's a valentine's day gift getting like a cute like lingerie is that oh like you got me that like unless you're unless it's uh you could dress up as a unless it's richard gear and jennifer um what's her name julia roberts and he's getting me like this long ball gown that's red and a huge diamond necklace that's the only clothing i need but so you want to be a stripper what are you on the, hollywood no, Boulevard no, no, no. but i think Christmas. for girls is headsets like headphones like i think everyone's really into those like those apple ones are yes. really expensive though yeah jewelry like maybe like a cute earring like little hoops yeah. like everyone likes like a little huggy nothing you can't go wrong with a ho hoop no girls will lo- love it perfume honestly you know what actually i would say if you're confused go on tiktok and just look up gifts for her there's like you can see every single That's girl true. gift that girls are obsessed with like maybe she doesn't even have it like oh this perfume has yeah. been really popular with girls like let me just get it for her i'm also just a big re-gifter yeah or or i'll go into my room look at like my products or my perfumes and if i like it i'll just buy them the same one yeah because that's it's fair. easier you know it's good you know i don't i don't want gifts i only like gift cards I don't want anything for Christmas other than gift cards. Do you know why? Because I don't like when people buy things for me. I want to just choose what I want to buy. Right? I think that's like kind of like the best of both worlds. You get a gift card from Sephora. Oh my God, perfect. I know exactly. I need to refill my just concealer. Just give me cash in an envelope. That's it. <laughs> just give me money. That's it. Just give me hundred dollars <laughs> for two months. <laughs> that's call how, it a day. No, it's fun. I feel like as I get older, I'm realizing that. I'm not wanting the things that I used to want when I was no. younger. Obviously, I'm like getting old. Yeah, I'm not asking my mom for like Barbie's dream house. But um, speaking of Barbie, I just went on a full on bender looking at every Barbie movie on um, Amazon Prime. Why? You bring up Barbie Swan Lake to me once a month. Why what? are you yelling? Because you're making it seem like it's weird that I just said that. Yeah, you but love you, it as Sophia, much. It's different when I said... I brought up one movie and you said you went on a bender. Not watching them, just looking at all the trailers. Like every show. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, and I just forgot how nostalgic it is. God, so you don't want a Barbie for Christmas? Hell no. What do you want then? I um, want like a gym membership. That's a nice A Barnes gift. and Noble gift card. Done. Amazon gift that's card. Your, that's what you're getting. A bookshelf. A bookshelf. Something <laughs> like that. But um, yeah, I have re-gifted things. Actually, no. I've never re-gifted anything, but I've gone like pretty bad gifts before like just just not one well, i mean i wouldn't say what you mean from like significant others well just from pe- friends and not just significant others like okay I, what's so bad that you've gotten i've gone <laughs> one of uh one of my friends gave me a therapy book like basically how to chill out it was basically i knew it was like how to calm you, down you need help read this it book. was so i was like it was sweet because you know obviously the intention behind it but yeah. i mean 
I'm like, in the holidays, I'm unwrapping paper. It says, get help. <laughs> <laughs> Getting humbled during the holidays. Yep. I'm like, okay, you know, it could help me, but like, thanks, I think. Um, I've gone to a cookbook full of just um, hamburgers. You don't even eat burgers? No. Okay. Fair. I mean, no, I do, but like, I don't make them. All right. There's just like hundreds and hundreds of photos of burgers that I can make. Someone gave me... um body soap and I was like are you trying Don't, to say that just I body soap? smell just one jar of body soap and I was like I don't smell all right I'm very hygienic so what is this oh yeah yeah oh I <laughs> it's like giving someone here's a toothbrush I'm like oh well <laughs> oh yeah I got this gift and I kind of thought it was like like a joke gift because I'm not really sure what I would do with it and I've never talked about this character in my life but I've gone a glass sculpture of Snoopy I remember that and I, I <laughs> and it was it was super sweet but I, I didn't get it. Like, I, I, yeah. I don't care about Snoopy. You like, at your bedside table, just a ceramic two-foot Snoopy. I just, like, do you remember we used to grow up having, like, like, mom used to keep a ton of these, just, like, those glass animals and little sculptures and, like, horses. Mom used to keep them. I was a collector as a child. That was my collection. How random. You know what's the scariest toy for me was those little Russian doll things that open up and they get smaller and smaller and smaller. Oh, I like those. I didn't like them. I thought that freaked me out. They, are they called Russian dolls? Yes. I think so, yeah. And I didn't like those, or dolls in general. I, I always broke every single glass sculpture we got when, like, little pony ones. Yeah, they were mine. always fall off, fell off. She ripped all the legs off my animals. Not on purpose. I wasn't just ripping off legs. Why are you even in my collection anyway? It, part of them were mine. Sophia, it was not your collection. You collected pennies and quarters I you did. dork I, you <laughs> collected quarters from every state i put them in a board so weird. And I, no it was the it was that the quarters like every single state i could get and i friggin did it twice over i feel like it i just unlocked so... a new memory i totally forgot you twi- used to collect eraser shavings too so don't come for me in my glass figurines All right, when you get them big enough <laughs> in a little basket they get really soft and fun to play with um <sighs> you didn't you were just upset. You know what we used to have in our remember we used to have like giant posters in our bedroom of like just the most random people. Yeah, we'd get them from like J14 magazine. Yeah, well, I I think I was normal. I had like Justin Bieber and all these like. What do you think? Pops. I'm not normal. You had photos of just kittens everywhere on your side of the wall. It was freaky. It was just like kind of like on your ceiling. Your stand. <laughs> The Naked Brothers Band. <laughs> oh, it was a cat or Nate Wolf. <laughs> There's no in between. I thought he was the sexiest person ever. <laughs> and Why? now looking back, I'm like, what was I thinking? I mean, it's kind of funny. He's kind of, he's kind of came back a little yeah, bit. Honestly. He had his moment. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, But I think that's just point blank. Like, I just give me money. <laughs> No, I appreciate yeah. every gift. I appreciate you know what every- I look forward to? The holidays are sort of like birthdays. Yeah. Because you always get that one curveball of a text from a certain someone that is waiting for a holiday just to creep right back into your life. Oh, yeah. Whether it's a side piece, an old hookup, you, an ex-boyfriend we or girlfriend. It, we're, we act like it's such an innocent move on our part or their part. Right? Oh, they're just being nice. No. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's intentional. An intentional. It's duh. so intentional. Because I do it. Oh, <laughs> you no. It's it's what you do. It's um, you do on Halloween. You do on Christmas. I if let's say if I was if single, you said right a Halloween. No, happy I'm, Halloween. No, I say I'm saying when I was single and I wanted an excuse to talk to someone, I would find any freaking holiday. I'd be like, Hey, happy Dolly, <laughs> Dolly, doll, whatever it's called, or Happy uh, Kwanzaa. Happy Columbus Day. Oh my God, like. Ha- <laughs> Happy President's Day. Happy St. Patty's. Hope you're doing really well. We should catch up soon. <laughs> it's true. It's such a like little sneaky move. It's horrible. I can't wait to hear from it, by, it, all of you guys. It, <laughs> so excited. It just kind of it, it does like kind of flip flop you. You're like, oh shit, what do I say? Birthdays are tough because you kind of should answer unless you don't know. I mean, you don't have to answer. But uh, when it comes to like Christmas, like that's also one you kind of should answer. And it just opens a can of worms. It's just dangerous. But I love worms. Open that can mm, right up. Yeah. Put them in a blender. And slurping it down. It's I just... am here for it. I love hearing. Here, I know last time I was actually in the studio, we were talking about can you be friends with your ex? And, and I everyone said, said no. no. And I still believe there's there's a way. No, so I yes, mean, I will answer your no, we also talked about happy Hanukkah last... text and no, all of that. We also talked about it in the studio. We said it, it's totally, we were literally fully serious saying like, it's so fine to say happy birthday to your ex. Like you should. 
We, I actually believe that. And I'm like, wait, what am I saying? Like, You, you know can't. what? I feel like it's until your current boyfriend gets mad. I don't. Yeah. This is, no. This is yeah. Because if you were single, it'd be fine. But I feel like every Until time I'm in a relationship. No, think gets about mad. Like, so I if I'm four in a, years online and that no, year, he gets if pissed. I'm in a relationship, okay, if I'm in a relationship. Yeah. And I'm texting my ex happy birthday. It's wrong. Yes, but if of I'm course. not in a relationship, I'm not hurting anyone. No. Yeah, of course. Maybe, my, maybe myself, that was not but I don't get when I don't get an answer, I'm hurting myself. Oh, but. no. I think the holidays in general, it just, you know, holiday parties, when you see your family members, you sometimes will run into those. You know what I hate about holiday parties? How many highs do you have to give to your whole family? I'm I feel like I'm just, like, so pessimistic. I'm being really confused right because now. literally the last episode, I was saying how I hate holiday parties and it's stressful. And you were dogging on me about, what are you talking about? It's so fun. So what? What? what's going on? I don't know. I'm thinking about it more and more now, now, now that we have to hit I think it's the rock around your neck. I it's giving you negative No, it's vibes. giving me balance. Just like those hoops are for your head. Those Boing. are the biggest hoops I've ever seen. Comes back from Miami. Literally I bought has these in Miami. On her ear. I bought. I bought you guys. I bought this in Miami. You. You don't look like yourself. I'm a little. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't like myself before. I did. Uh, She's boring. Look at just she look died. at the phone case. It's just all of it. It's like you're bedazzled right now. This is just not you. This is such a change. I got silver tips on my fingers. It looks like I fingered the Tin Man. It's like not. Did you, did taking eighteen shots alter your brain? I actually think it did because yeah. I, I made so some very questionable decisions, Ooh. which I really want to talk about. But stunning, stunning, stunning. Do you know that uh, prosecco in it? Stunning. I love it. I'm good at it. <laughs> Do it. Okay. You're so bad at accents. But you I have can't to, wait you to, have to say the line. What's the first line? What's your drink of choice? What's your drink of choice? A Negroni. Spagliato. Stunning. With Prosecco in it. Oh. See, that wasn't bad. I felt like you were trying to give me like seduce eyes and. Well, she was seductive in it. That yeah, went but were viral. you trying to be seductive? No, Sistine, you're my sister. Why would I give you seductive eyes? You know what? Speaking of this, Sophia told me the other day that she said, she said to me, I look like I'm a bad kisser. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Don't you feel like you can tell if someone's a good kisser or not just by looking at them? I just don't think you're good. You're bad. I've never You give been told me open bad. mouth vibes. Open mouth vibes? Like you go in with an open mouth. I feel like you're tight lipped. Like, no, I use the lips. But but now I'm in my head about it <laughs> and I hate you. I've been told I'm good. <laughs> Then you're probably, I mean, no, someone told, who was this? I think our cousin Ryan, I'm like, oh yeah, I've been told I was a good kisser. And he goes, you know, guys just say that to like, no. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, oh. so now you never know. Now I don't know. I think I am. I'm just going to say I am and think I am. So I Do you am. remember when we were young and we used to practice you you kissing believe. on a spoon? Do you <laughs> we practice kissing a spoon. I used to watch just YouTube videos of how to make out. That's remember yeah, our guests. We had, oh yeah. It was like how to kiss. Yeah. God, I I took that to heart. Scarlet's by far the worst, I have to say. Oh, yeah, Scarlet, yeah, for sure. She gives bad kissing vibes. You know what it is? I'm a perfectionist, so I have to be good. No, really. Like, I I need to. See, this is why I don't think you're good, because you're so, te- you say because you're so technical that you're not in the moment. No, you're thinking about the, how I'll... to be perfect First, and look hot it's just, and see, kiss I'm not well. standing there going, head turned right, let yeah, me go down there. No, f- hell no. The fact that I'm a perfectionist and I'm, like, methodical about it, I think... Okay, I gotta go there. Oh, then I gotta go here. Oh, then we're gonna go That's there. That's making me nauseous. Does it ruin if someone's a bad kisser on the first date? Duh. Do you? Yeah. I, I don't. Feel- I think it's one of those things that you can't just ha- teach them over time. Yeah. And I do think if there's some sort of dance that just flows perfectly yeah. and organically, then that says something. Yeah. You know, the funniest thing I've ever seen was that guy. It was that video. Um, one of those. You know those YouTube uh, channels that do those experiments with people where they go, okay, um, this guy that's never kissed before is going to kiss like 10 girls. Those are or, so funny. Or they have like, they have an astrologist guess people's zodiac signs without like knowing them or things yes. like that. Or tell, pick the people together that they're dating. But I remember this one guy and it was about, I think he's never kissed before. It was the most uncomfortable thing I've ever seen. I know seen. who you're talking about. You know that guy? Yeah. yeah I think he, didn't he run away? Bless him. Yeah. No, but um, he should kiss me. I need practice. Apparently, speaking of kissing and maybe not kissing, is I'm watching the new Too Hot to Handle. Are you? There's a new one. 
Yeah, it just came out. You know, I really always, I've always wanted to be on one of those stupid shows. I We've always said we wanted to be on it, but didn't want to be on it. Is it good? Anyone cute? Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Great cast. You Stacked. are such a reality, like, I dating. I love it. You're, the new Love Island can't get into it. I've probably watched every single dating show. Fuck Boy Island. Um, you should make one. Do you ought to handle you should Love make it Island? Be, you Australia, should make a dating Eng- show. US. I would. You should it. like make one. Create I would, one. I know because I, I, I put would, me as no, the lead. I want to be a host of a dating show. Like, I would. No, love not it. the host. Create. No, one. I, I want to, but I'm saying that I would love to be a host and create it. No, no, no. You can't be the host because I'm going to be. No, the host. No, 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 no. Yeah. Why would you say that? I want. I want to be the host. No, wow, but I'm more I of a hosting you... face. Stop it. You are such... <laughs> no, you look like you... No, no. Okay, Sistine. Who is she? Who knows? Because... Okay, you brought in a study. Let's hear your study. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Be a little eager. No, I know. Okay, so we actually tried to do this last week, and um, I'm really into this new topic. So, you guys, if you don't like this topic, I usually say let me know, but don't let me know because I actually am going to keep this forever. If you don't like it, fall asleep now. Because it's about sleeping. It's actually about dreams. So <laughs> I, you know, of course, I'm a researcher, so I love to look up things, anything. I like to figure out why things happen the way they are. So we're doing this little thing called Sophia's Studies. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an ass. <laughs> what? We literally were like, Sophia's Studies. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you said the that was so uncomfortable. Yeah. Take it away, sis. Okay, cool. I hope you guys watched that. Oh, you're making me sweat. <laughs> okay. So I remember last episode I was talking about lucid dreams, mm. right? Lucid dreams are really cool. They kind of freaked me out, but I'm into them. Um, and also one thing I realized about lucid dreams that are really scary is the sleep paralysis that you can get from lucid dreaming. Where you see like monsters. Yeah. So basically your devil. body's turned off and your mind's on and mm. your eyes are open and you can see the things in real time, like ghosts or whatever, I'll be right. you can't it. move. I know you like that stuff. You're kind of twisted a little bit. Thank you. I know. She like reads books about Richard Speck and every murder and serial killer on Helps the planet. Helps me fall asleep. This is why you shouldn't be the host of anything, including a dating show. Why? Because all these serial killers are like love guys and they like kill the people they're on dates with. Why would you be the host of that? I'm like, I read romance novels. So you're saying I should day. start a show called like Dating Serial Killers? I really oh don't think Oh my God, and they hit. like try to like get back on the market and they yeah. turn a new leaf. They're not trying to kill anymore. They're just trying to find love. That's a good idea. That's really not a good idea. Okay, go I can on. tell you right now. Okay. So I'm just going to say some facts and I think, it, I think it'd be kind of interesting because I didn't know. So 95% of people forget their dreams waking up, but we have at least four to six dreams a night. Do you know that? We have four, four to six? Four to six dreams a night, and then our most vivid ones occur around 4 a.m. I thought there was going to be more than that. And you know what's interesting is that I realize when I wake up in the middle of the night, like at three or two, you know when your body suddenly wakes up? When I go back to sleep, I feel like that's when my dreams are the most vivid. Yeah. You know? Maybe that's why. Maybe because we're a little bit more awake and our mind's awake. Mm. But, okay. And did you know 12% of people dream in black and white? How interesting is that? That's weird. I've never dreamed in black and white. I think that they only mm-hmm. dream in black and white. How is it? Do, they're obviously not seeing black and white during the day. Like, why does well, it change? Well, if you guys, if anyone watching this dreams in black and white, shoot us a message. We got to talk. <laughs> so they realize even dreaming, like when they analyzed at least 50,000 dreams, all of them are associated with negative feelings more than positive ones. Like, it's rare to have, like, a really mm-hmm. positive dream. Like, a lot of the things that maybe it's good, some of them are positive, but... They're slightly associated with some anxiety, which is kind of sad. Maybe it's because all of our fears come out at night. I think because people are very stressed most of the time. Yeah. And you go to bed stressed and then you dream stressed. And then this is also when I didn't know this. Men dream more about men, not sexually, than women. Really? Yeah. Like men have dreams about Can men. Can we confirm this? Like, do you dream? Man behind the camera? I have a lot of dreams where I'm like with my friends. Yes. Okay. For some reason, girls dream more about 50 50. Okay. Girls and guys, but guys end up dreaming a lot more frequently about their guy friends or guys. It's a bromance. It's a bromance. I was (laughs) kind of interested. Okay. So this is, this is, I think, something we can kind of dive into. 23% of people have dreamt about their partner cheating on them or having an affair themselves. Yeah, but do you dream it? Does that count as cheating? That's that's that's. What I, I feel was like some thinking. people would say yes. I know. So I was reading about this a little bit more, 
And that's why people, when they wake up, they get really angry at their partner or they feel really guilty after doing it. I love doing that. I I have remembered. It's so have funny. You, I re- actually, I feel like this happened maybe two months ago where I woke up and I thought my boyfriend had cheated on me. And I was so mad at him the whole day. Yeah. And this poor boy, I was like, you t- <laughs> like, I was, like, it's I not real. Insane, right? Because how do you, it's so crazy how like real dreams can get and it can really just mess with your emotions. But well, especially dreams that. are the only way you can explore that opportunity with anyone in the world. But I've had shitty dreams. And I've woken up okay, but I, it's only when it comes to that stuff that I wake up and I, I still throughout feel... No, that's just us wanting to find any reason to get mad at our boyfriend. No. <laughs> yes. No, no, no. But okay, so... You get mad at someone because of a dream. Like, he's got no shot. To each their own. Okay, so I think I wanted to kind of go into top things that people dream about and what they mean okay. so if anyone has like a dream that they haven't they've been having frequently these are like the top ones so if you're being chased in your dream mm. and you feel like every time you get chased you just cannot get out of the situation i've been chased a you lot know like dreams. as fast as you go as many corners as you cut yeah. you just cannot get away it's associated with anxiety that things are catching up to you in real life which is, oh, no. I pray, yeah, which feels like, so things are kind of like in the background that are coming up to you and you just feel like you can't get rid of it. Okay. Um, teeth falling out. It yes, can, this one I get a yes. lot. Um, it can represent some sort of personal loss or feelings of inadequacy. Just kidding. I don't get that one. <laughs> <laughs> Never drew up out of my <laughs> life. <laughs> no, it's not. I, 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 no. I, you know what? Teeth, you do say that you had that a lot, but I feel like a no, lot. No, I didn't. Okay, Sophia. I'm just kidding. I've had this one. Flying, but this is more when I was younger. Now I yeah, can't fly. Yeah, that's like a young one. This is like personal freedom, control, the and um, unconscious abilities that you can possess. Falling, I've had that so many times where I've kicked that's myself the in the middle worst of the night. When you actually like your body Spasms. launches up because you I know. feel like you're actually falling. So this is we've lost control in some aspect of our life that needs to be identified. Possibly a metaphor for a need to be grounded or lost touch with reality. Is it though? What what do else do you think it is? But like how would how would they know this? Whoever's doing the research on this, how would you know that that's what it means? To the detail that that's what it means. It's so specific. I well, I feel like they're I don't know. Okay, then this one's kind of interesting. Seeing old friends. So these childhood friends that you no longer associate emerge in your dreams to show you that the past is still relevant. Dreams oh. commonly resurface past experiences if change is needed in your life. So, yeah, I was going to ask you what dreams you've had the most frequently, and I can help look it up and tell you what your problem is. Maybe the teeth falling one was already answered. I don't, actually, like, I haven't been remembering my dreams lately. Really? Yeah. I'll tell you what my horrible ones have been recently were the most frequent one I got is I can't talk. I'll open my mouth and I feel myself talking the way I talk, but no words come out and no one's listening. And it's really annoying. Like, I can't control that it. That would be my dream. <laughs> For me to not be able to freaking talk. It took you a second to get that one. No, it took me exactly <laughs> how long it should have taken, which is, hey, um, you I'm know what? I'm kidding. I hope your teeth fall out. <laughs> but yeah, okay. so that's my study corner. I love learning about dreams. If you guys want to look up any dreams, go on Dream Dictionary because I think it's really so interesting to you guys, it. That was Sophia's studies. We're testing out this new segment. If you guys like it, let us know. We'll but, do another study. No, we're, no, we're going to do another study. Oh, okay. Regardless if you like it or not, I wanted, but back. you know what, Sistine? I'm just going to say it right now because I usually do my studies and I talk about dating and all that stuff and like what guys would like more with like red lips and black clothing. But I kind of was like, you know what? Let's just kind of let's change it up a little bit. We're talking about dating. Oh. Yeah, we're elevating as a podcast. We're getting more serious. So we're talking about dreams. But next week we're doing the red nail theory. <laughs> oh yeah, that actually. Do you believe in that? One hundred percent. So if you don't know what red nail theory is, nail, red nail theory is apparently when girls wear red nails, you get more uh, attention from male. Because males. men growing up were used to seeing older f- women figures in their life, like their teacher or their mom, wearing red nails, and that's where it came from. I used to have a math teacher that had different length nails. She was my calculus teacher it was no geometry teacher and it was horrible i had an art she scared teacher me so mad that had a pet squirrel with one eyeball i remember her yeah and the squirrel you couldn't pet the squirrel because it was a mean squirrel yeah she carried it in a cage so we you know how much we love conspiracy theories yes you guys actually have been asking i don't know actually if you've been asking 
conspiracy theories, where do they go? Yeah. This no, no, we've week, had some. We've, had, DMs. we've had some DMs. Yes, thank you. Uh, this week, I decided I'm going to list a bunch of very reputable conspiracies that I found on Reddit and TikTok, and we will decide whether they are true or not. Rapid fire. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. I'm just going to blow your guys' minds. What if stars are cameras from aliens and we are a zoo or experiment? Okay. Can I counter it? I mean, I guess. Okay. The reason why I don't think that's true is because I think that why would aliens who are, if they're out there, tremendously smarter than us, why would they care to analyze us who are thousands and thousands of years back than we what need to else be. Are, what well, else would they do? They probably have a lot of things they can do other All right, than studying fine. us. So we don't believe that one. That'd Number kind, two. It's like Truman Show. I like this one. What if oxygen is actually poisonous and it takes 70 to 100 years to affect us? <laughs> oh, so like a controlled... Yeah. I think that's... A, I think, is that real? Yeah. yeah. It's like one of the, like, the major things of like aging. And everything. See? Ooh. What if it's actually poisonous and everyone dies within 70 to 100 it's years old? It's killing off our telomeres. I know. Um, I believe that one. You know, I just thought about this. What if aliens are sim controllers? And that's, I guess we're, we're back s- to the first one. Yeah, but we're... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but right I'm, over okay, the second Think about one. it. What if... You know how we said we're in a simulation? Because Elon Musk Well, you're going to... We okay, pause. Because well, he said, and I quote, Sophia, my heart doesn't I believe not, it, I, I did not interrupt it. your study. <laughs> Let me conspiracy right now. <laughs> okay, so our oxygen is killing us. What's next? What you just said is number four anyway, so keep your pie hole shut. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, oxygen's killing this us. Is why Do I we dream. believe it? Yes. Well, I can't talk. We believe oxygen's killing us. Okay, that's kind of yes. crazy. Number three. I like this one. What if every time you hear that voice in your head telling you not to do something, it's your future self warning you because they already know the outcome? <sighs> nah. So you don't believe there's like a future? Nah. Okay, never mind. That's All way right. too complex. What? I mean, I have a lot of deja vu. Maybe it's like my uh, future self re-coming back my body. Yeah. <gasps> oh! <laughs> See? <laughs> Whoa, wait. <laughs> wait! Take it back. That actually, you know, I take it back. Thank That's you. That's what deja vu is. It's our uh, our future, future self, self like jumping, jumping back, back in, in jinx. telling us like, Maybe our future self just knew we were going to say that at the same time. I haven't had deja vu for a bit, so I think my future self has ditched me for a little bit. It's not happy with you. Yeah. Number four. What if our life is a video game and every time you start a new year, you start a new level? As the game progresses, the levels get harder. Those who die have completed the game. Think about it. The older you get, the more you're faced with. Being a kid is super easy. No, Being it's not. Hard. Bullying? What level is that? 400? Yeah, but job, career, mortgage, taxes. relationships, death, taxes, <laughs> tax evasion, prison. There's two things you can't avoid, death and tax. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do we believe this? I, I just think maybe this is more of a metaphor. Mm, you know? Yes. Yeah. I get Nah. I don't say it's this theory, but it's a metaphor. I believe right. in the future self. Theory. I definitely believe in this last one. Yeah, okay. Your birthmark is actually a clue of how you died in your past life. The location of your mark is where you got hurt and died. See, I have a birthmark on the inside of my butt cheek. So what is that saying about my so, death? No, Sissine, remember we both discovered that we both had the same birthmark? We have birthmark, matching birthmarks on our ass. Butt. Yeah, we do. So how would you die? We died. Maybe we both died the same way. Maybe we were friends in a past life. Maybe we sat on a porcupine. Uh, that's like, a, we wouldn't die of that. Well, that's interesting. Okay, that was my conspiracy corner. I think Sophia ruined it. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Why? I can make comments. <laughs> yeah, I know you can I'm, make comments. Yeah, so I'm making comments. <laughs> People are probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. I'm just the I'm just the listener. Which one did you believe the most? I think the oxygen one. Um, for sure. The oxygen one, yeah, that one, that one got me convinced a little bit. I don't believe in the last one. The stars, the aliens, I think that kind of combines with number four a little bit. But I do think that um, deja vu is us being like, what if deja vu is us being rebooted because the aliens are trying to control us with the simulation? It's like a reboot. Like they're logging back in. <laughs> I'm going to piggyback off that. Have you ever seen those videos on YouTube about how <laughs> stars are hinting at the Illuminati that they sold their soul? Actually, it's crazy. David Dobrik just came out with this video 
that he had his girlfriend I saw that come video. over and that this guy was part of the Illuminati and said that in order to join, to be a singer, an actress, whatever you want to be, to be wildly successful, you have to sacrifice a loved one or someone in your life and that she was crying and all this crap. If you look up this compilation on YouTube, it's some of the biggest celebrities like Cardi B and Angelina Jolie. Well, Jimmy, and, uh, Jimmy, Jim Carrey believes in it. Right. And you see them like short circuit for a second, which just reminded me of your deja vu thing. Do you think they, that's where lizard people come from? Why are you going to bring lizard people into this right now? Well, because the biggest people are lizard people. Remember how that conspiracy theory we had before? Yeah, we got to wrap the show up. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing an unsolicited advice. If you guys want your questions to be answered on the show, make sure you go to our Apple podcast page. Give us five stars and leave your question in the ratings and review section. That is the only way we are going to answer it. Okay. It is from Mans, Mads, M A N. Oh, it's I think probably like Mandy, M A N D S, like whatever. Mans. Um Favorite podcast. I love listening to Sophia and Sistine so much. It makes me feel like I'm one of their friends and sisters, and they always brighten my day. You are. See? Love yeah, you. Even as chaotic as our shows are, it, it, it's basically like a like a, yeah, it's like a perfect. kitchen table conversation. For unsolicited advice, I have a question. How do you make new friends? I am graduated from college, and I'm in my early 20s, but I always am looking to make new friends, but feel like it can be really daunting. Okay. Thank you. Love you both. So we love I... you, too. Love this question. It stuck out to me because I feel like I can relate so I, heavily. Yes. You Sistine can relate to you about it's hard making new friends. I can tell you how to because I've finally ex like figured out how to do it after college. I think you have the best of both worlds with this answer. Yeah. Someone that went to college, found college friends, and someone who didn't go to college and didn't get the opportunity to meet that new people. So literally starting from ground zero, trying to meet friends. What I have to say is, I would constantly kick myself being like, I have no friends. I don't do this. I don't do that. But I also am, am not reaching out to people. I'm not asking people for their number when I first meet them. I'm not putting myself out there. So no one's going to spoon feed you to meet friends is what I've realized the hard way. And yeah, you just have to push yourself. Try to reach out to people that you wouldn't typically... Like you maybe had a good time with them, don't know them that well, and get dinner and see where it goes. Just put yourself in situations that set you up for meeting new people because it's not going to come just fall on your lap. That's good. No, I completely agree with that. And to like go off of that, um, a lot of the times, like I have college friends and I, I get it because a lot of them when you're going to college, like they go back to their hometowns. It could be across the country, somewhere else. And then... You know, also, when you leave college, you guys change in your lives. Like, people are in different situations with their boyfriends or their family or their career. And so, you know, it's kind of interesting when you see someone out of college, like, your worlds can be different. So mm -hmm. you're thinking, okay, I need to make friends that are more aligned to what's going on in my life right mm -hmm. now. Um, and, like, to go off what Sistine said, like, putting yourself in those positions. And, for example, like, I actually just met up with a girlfriend last night that I didn't meet through college. And I met through a workout class. And I'd go to her workout classes a lot and we're the same age. And it we ended up talking. And I think what the first step needs to be is like you going up to someone and talking to them. Yeah. If there's someone you're seeing frequently at you're the cafe you always go to, maybe it's if you're studying acting, you're going to acting classes, maybe it's a workout class, whatever it is that you go to often and you think this person has like a really nice energy mm -hmm. to them and they're open. Like it doesn't hurt to try. It's like dating. No, I mean, if you think about it, if someone came up to you and said, hey, how are you? It's nice. Would you be so weirded out by that person or would you be really flattered and happy they did that? Or even say like so this someone is a hard would like class. if you did that too. Like it's. Yeah. Just do what makes you feel good. Yeah. You can just say like, oh, this workout cause is hard, right? Like you don't have to be all like diving in. And it, it's also 100% sustaining, right? Reaching out to those friends that you were considering yeah. or you or maybe you met through a college friend that like lives in the area. It's yeah, it, you know, it is like dating. But it is scary. I get where you're coming from. But don't don't let that stop you from meeting new people either. Mm -hmm. Cuz that's just a temporary form of anxiousness and you don't need to live like that. Yeah. I don't either. So we'll work on it together. <laughs> Okay, I think that's it for this episode. Good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of the Unwaxed Podcast, and we will see you next Tuesday. Adios.